Adam Kaplan is our NFL insider on Sports Grid. You see him across the board on, on literally every show. And more importantly, on C to C, a double shot today. You can follow him on X at Kaplan NFL. Almost 30 years covering the National Football League. Five years with Uncle Futrelli here on C to C. We'll start with this. Uh, I have always said to you and others, guys with bad hamstrings and calves, remain that way until they're better. Guys that come back early from hamstrings and calves and think they're better, but actually aren't better, have what's happening to Russell Wilson right now. Yeah, let me explain the Russell Wilson situation. So Wilson had a calf strain to begin training camp, right? He, he missed the early portion. I saw him when he came back to practice when I was there for two days in Latrobe. Looked fine, okay? Has had no issues until now. It's the same calf, by the way, that they're listing on the injury report for. Uh, he's getting reevaluated. We'll see what happens tomorrow. It's not good. Tomorrow's the last day of practice for the week. Then they travel Saturday. Of course, Justin Fields uh, took over for him uh, when he couldn't practice and couldn't finish. So that that's not good. Because your Steelers, by the way, they're, they're banged up on the offensive line, right? We'll, we'll get to that in a second. Rowan Wilson, which I told you a couple weeks ago, it's actually a high ankle sprain, not a normal ankle sprain. Uh, their third-round pick, receiver out of Michigan. They're not very deep at wide receiver. This worries me, Scott, with their injuries on the offensive line. Wilson, and you're talking about an older quarterback in his mid-30s, you worry about these kind of injuries as, as quarterbacks get older. These tend to linger, by the way. you, you got to be careful with calf. You know, as a basketball player, these things right. can reoccur, which has just happened now on the same calf that he had. I'm going back, Scott, the first week of August, okay? You're talking about a month ago. That does right. worry me, and we're, we're, time's running out here. they got to get this thing right. And they made that trade for, for Justin Fields, as you know. There's a reason why they have him on, on, on the football field. By the way, Isaac Sayamalo is not going to play, who who's, was their best lineman last year when they're starting guards with the pectoral strain. But Tano took all the starters reps today, who's, who's going to be their starting right tackle. That's good. Hopefully there will not be a setback with an MCL sprain. So right now he's trending towards being able to play. But, again, their depth in the offensive line is not good. But defensively, and we'll talk more about this tomorrow, they're pretty healthy. And when you look at the Falcons, Kyle Pitts, by the way, return to practice day. He, he gave everybody a scare, particularly people who play fantasy. But he's fine. He took all his reps today with that hamstring issue. All right. So let me ask you about um, uh, Warren. He thinks his hamstring's better. Uh, and, and yep. you know, I'm worried about that. Like, all it takes is you, you retweak that thing, and then you're out. Yep. He'll miss four or five games. Yeah. And Jalen Warren, by the way, this is a big year for him. Uh, former undrafted free agent has been a great story, and they've got that great tandem running back for the Arthur Smith ball, by the way, in Atlanta. So we look forward to seeing that game on Sunday. But Atlanta's healthy. Your Steelers are not. But it's generally, again, on the offensive side of the football, defensively, they're healthy. Let's talk about uh, the Eagles. All of a sudden, they've yeah. got a problem in their back end heading to Sao Paulo. Yeah, they are actually in Brazil. They had a workout today. This is this is a little bit of a surprise, but let me explain. So Isaiah Rogers, Scott, you might remember he was one of the players who was banned for a year due to gambling, right? So he signed a one-year deal with the Eagles. Uh, no guaranteed money, kind of what we call the old make good contract. If you want to get paid, you got to be on the roster. It's been a great story of development. He's actually been one of their top three outside corners. He hurt his hand a couple weeks ago. He didn't do anything last week, and the Eagles actually ruled him out today. That's a little bit of a surprise. So he's not going to play. And what they're going to do, Keely Ringo, who was a fourth rounder last year out of University of Georgia, who had a very good training camp, he'll replace him as that third outside corner. In fact, when they go to nickel, Quinion Mitchell, their first round pick out of Toledo, has been going inside. And Rogers has been in the outside corner. So Ringo's going to replace him there. And though the Eagles feel much better about their secondary this year than they did last year, that not having Rogers, who's, by the way, the fastest outside corner. That does worry me a little bit, and, and we'll, we'll break this uh, the, the scheme down and the matchup down tomorrow for the Packers-Eagles. But this does worry me because the Packers are super loaded at that wide receiver position. Before we uh, get into your uh, NFL win totals, I wanted to show you Carver High's yeah. sheet of integrity <laughs> and get your assessment of these NFL win totals, yeah. the sheet of integrity. All right, I'm staying away from the Patriots one. To take under, this is insane. I get it that Carver's got getting them at plus one of six under. 
that, that to me, Scott, is a little bit of a stretch. I couldn't do that. The one I love, because you you know I've been on the Packers this entire offseason. Packers fans gave me hate when it, when we when I retweeted that video this morning. It was not good. See, I'm sorry, Lion fans did. Because right. Lions were my team for the p- previous two years. But I love the Packers over nine and a half, by the way. That's minus 138. Remember when I told you when when these numbers came out back in May and June, I said, get on them now because it's, it's going to be harder. But it's still reasonable at minus 138 at nine and a half. I love th- this one because this is funny. I love the Jets over nine and a half. Mike loves them under plus 132. See, he's a Bills fan, okay? He's a Jets hater. As he said off the air, we know that he, the Jets are going to jet, but guess what? Aaron Rodgers is back. I, Scott, I've told you for weeks, if, if he plays 15 games, they're winning the AFC East, which we know they haven't done in a long, long time. But I'm telling you right now that, that Mike's going to be wrong about that one. We all agree in the Steelers over eight and a half. That's plus 136. And and I think I like what Mike said here with the Chargers on, under eight and a half and plus 104. They're one of the, the top three most overhyped teams because Jim Harbaugh, I get it. He's won everywhere. But they got issues on the roster. I don't agree with it. I do agree with Mike on the over on the Bucks at uh, over seven and a half at minus 132. And Scott, you and I have talked about this. The Bears are the number one hype team. Matt Eberflus all of a sudden is going to win Coach of the Year, right? The the I like the under at plus one thirty because they, again they're super overhyped. The betting markets have pushed this number over. A lot of people are going over, not under like Mike and I do. Uh, I, I like that under, but you know overall here the one that I just do, don't agree with. I disagree strongly, vehemently. I <laughs> the Jets or. The Jets, and I don't like to say the lock word, but I'm telling you, if Rodgers plays 15 games or more, I know, but this team's healthy. They you, they are a shoe in to win the NFC, the AFC. Yeah, I love Kaplan. He's got him playing 15 games. Meanwhile, he played four snaps last season, I know, I know. and he was finished. All right, let's look at your win totals, Cap. Yep, yep, yep. So, so the ones that I like, Scott. Let let. Do you want to start with the AFC? You want to start the – let's just go overall, right? Let's just go overall. I, And this is a big number, okay? The Niners at 10 and a half at minus 190. Scott, they're, they're, they're going to win 12 to 13 games. Now, this is interesting. The, the total at 11 and a half, the over is plus 125, folks. That's where the value is. The Niners are the best NFC team. They got the IU contract straightened out. They got the Trent Williams thing straightened out. Now, McCaffrey has got that calf issue, which they've now listed more of Achilles. Right. They're not worried about him playing, but you just mentioned it. Now, he's 28 years old. You worry about this. He had a calf injury or an issue late last season, so you got to watch this. But the over, clearly, at, at, at 11 and a half, that, that is a value at plus 125. That's one I like. Now, yes, I'm picking the Packers. I want to make this clear here. Yes, I'm picking the Packers to shock the world and win the, the NFC North. But the 10 and a half of minus, minus 135 for the Lions, they're going to win. Okay, they're going to win 11 or 12 games. And the Packers, depending on which book you're looking at, which I've told you, at, at since May, Scott, I've told you, at nine and a half, the, at, again, minus 145, that's like stealing. Again, if they're healthy, they're going to get that easily. <laughs> what about your Eagles? You have them winning 11 or more games. Yeah, I have them on there. The reason why I didn't, I didn't put an X next Speaking to that one. No, no, but here's the thing, Scott. This is a tough matchup. Their, their schedule, I would call that moderate. I gave that a, a 2.5 schedule that's sort of moderate for me in my, my five-point grading system. But the thing is, the roster is not great. It The, the thing is, the coaching is going to be better. But, again, Scott, I, I don't like him over 8.5 as much as other people, 10.5 as much as other people do. 